I'll fly away, oh glory, glory. Uh, you know, well, only people that have asked for forgiveness and uh, can even grasp an inkling. You know, with music, music is like an experience, and I'll say it this way, because um, it can kind of like move you, and then it can kind of uh, depress you. It can lift you up. I mean, that's how music kind of is. Um, you will notice when you sing the hymns, <laughs> when you sing, e even what would be um, like, because uh, some people go, oh, this is a fast one, this is a slow one. That has nothing to do um, with the experience because the experience is this conversation with God in song or taking in what God has for you in song and so you can understand it is well with my soul you know what you have people who are singing to it, it is well with my soul because they they have no idea first of all it's not even well so why would I have any kind of thought process of, of how well it is you know because they just don't have it and so the same thing with I'll fly away there's people on this planet that have no idea what it means that you know what uh, just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away when when my last breath is taken on this planet on this earth or if he calls me to meet him in the air and 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 be with him for all eternity the people just cannot grasp that's why it's I'll fly away oh glory that's just me because <laughs> I'm sitting here as we're singing the songs and and, and I'm like, wow, the things that we standing on the promises of Christ my king. See, if he ain't your king, you ain't got nothing with it. We talked about in Sunday school this morning about promises. How God had made promises from Moses. Uh, well, God has always made promises. Um, God's presence has been from the beginning of time. Think about it. From the beginning of time, God walked with mankind that he, first of all, that he created. And so people don't grasp that thought process that God, um, I do love the scriptures in, in Genesis, especially that one where it talks about he breathed into what he had formed. It has life. It has his breath. It has his life. It is let us create in our image. And so when you have that thought process, and then if you go into the story of Genesis, God walked in the garden with them until mankind decided to, decided to rebel, to break the relationship. See, that's another time where you talk about songs. The, you, know, um, you can have, now I know uh, Lauren's already thinking, he's going to talk about the breakup song, which is totally different than what you're thinking. Because you can have uh, country breakup songs, you can have rock and roll breakup songs. Um, I'll, I'll go rock and roll just for It's Time for Me to Fly <laughs> by Ario Speedwagon. Some of you might not know that song, but it's totally different than I'll Fly Away. It's like, I'm leaving you, babe. <laughs> That's what that one was. And so you have these bad breakup songs. Lauren back there is thinking of the breakup song, and I cannot think of her name. Shout it out. Francis 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 Francisco Benicelli. And I'm saying it wrong, and that's okay. The FB lady, who's a Christian artist, her breakup song is, you know what? Everything that is fear has nothing. I, the, you're gone. I leave you behind. Because why? I have Christ. And so there's, a, there's this thing that takes place with the presence of God. And so in Sunday school class, we were learning this promise because it went from the beginning was a promise and see, we got to understand this. With promises, even when mankind decided to rebel against God, God still has a promise to be with us. He still has a promise to save us. In fact, um, it's just mind-boggling. Cain kills his brother Abel, and God puts a mark on him. Why? Watching out. I mean, there's more to the story. I understand that. But we have to grasp that God, in all of mankind, 
has decided to always have, have his presence with us. Then you have the presence uh, uh, with Moses, okay? And all those people being led out of Egypt. And we, as we were talking about in Sunday school class, it wasn't that Moses did it, or it wasn't that Aaron did it. It was how they allowed God to use them, how God's presence on these individuals was a promise to come out of slavery, was a promise of the promised land, even in the word, the promised land. Okay, and so you had this thought process of God's promise with the people, and then even Moses didn't make it over there. His, the, the promise wasn't quite fulfilled for him, but it was moving through him. And then think about it, because then Joshua came up and fulfilled that promise of the promised land and going forward, and it just keeps on going. Uh, they carried the Ark of the Covenant, and there's all these problems with it. It was lost, and they got it back, and then what happens? On David's heart, he, just, he, he has God's presence. And man, this is why, because I've been a messed up person, and I read stories about messed up people that God still uses with his presence, David, and, and David, think about it this way, like when we had tithes and offerings, it was kind of in my thought process, that same, the gathering in, and that's what King David did. He was gathering in for a temple to be built for a place where everyone could recognize this is the house of God. And, and all the glory, and all the honor that had to go into it as David gathered in. And what takes place? Solomon, his own flesh and blood, fulfills the promise and, and, uh, of the temple being built. And then it doesn't just stop there. It keeps on going all the way up to that promise of his own son, Jesus Christ, coming to save us. To save everyone. And then the beauty of it is that as Jesus is about, of course, he's, he's crucified. We're going to talk about that in just a, a moment as we have communion. He's crucified. He dies on the cross as a sacrifice for me and you. Never get it wrong. Sacrifice for me and you, but the God in all of his infinite glory, in all of his infinite power, in all of his infinite plan of this, raises his son, Jesus Christ, to life. And, and, and even for some 40, was it, 40 days after the resurrection, he's still teaching people. He's still connecting with the people so that you would know that, you know what? What, what mankind tried to destroy, they cannot with God. Because God's presence is with me. Remember, let's go back to Jesus in the river. What happened? It, what looked like a dove came and sat upon him. So those people could recognize this one. In fact, um, it's in scripture where it says that uh, um, the, the, they heard that this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And so you have this presence of God that continues. And then as Jesus is about to ascend, to leave after the resurrection, that could have been a point in time where the church ended. Where the followers ended. Well, this is it. He's going to heaven. Um, we do have a hope that we'll go there too. But before he leaves, he leaves a promise. I will never leave you. In fact, here is the gift of, my Holy, of the Holy Spirit. To be with you always. God's presence is... And Jesus in his teachings... He knew that the temple would be destroyed. He knew all of Jerusalem would be destroyed. And in that destruction, it could have been, because that, so that we have a, a thought process. 70 years late, in 70 A, uh, excuse, 70 AD, 70 years later, Jerusalem is destroyed. So if you want to go, oh, some things aren't true, or, or um, uh, I don't know about the truth of the scriptures, I'm going to tell you what, he said that this, the temple would be destroyed, and guess what happened? The temple was destroyed. All of Jerusalem was destroyed. But did God's presence leave? No. And so what we have is the new temple. What we have is the body. What we have is us, the people. And that promise continues on. 
please do not rebel against what the promise is to you. And that is the work of the Holy Spirit. God's presence in you. Standing on the promises. I cannot fail. I, I hope you guys, the, the words were huge. I cannot fail. We live in a world where failure is everywhere and people think I'm a failure and you are not a failure. In fact, in God, you are not a failure. You're worthy of my praise. Are you washed in the blood? There was one line in there, are you washed in the blood? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you ever you sat there and go, what? Wait, because here's my first thought. Anybody ever seen blood? A lot of blood? How do you take what is spotless and white and you take this blood and you're going to tell me that that's white and spotless? How? Because you know what? You can't do it. Was it like grape juice? Or if you're a wino, you spill it on you. you go, How am I going to get that out? Might as well throw that. Sh you know what that shirt becomes? The work shirt at home for cleaning. Might even become a rag because it's got a spot on it. Um, I, I'm not promoting anything, but uh, uh, it reminds me of things. You know, Holly, Hollywood has some thoughts, you know. There was a Seinfeld episode where George bought a cashmere sweater and he tried giving it away as a gift and everyone right away knows. You see that spot on there? And I couldn't even see it. No one saw it on TV. But the whole episode was about a tiny spot that ruined a cashmere sweater. Why? Because mankind cannot make what is covered in blood spotless. Only God can. That's how I can understand that song. His presence is in it. Sweet hour of prayer. We're going to talk about prayer. And there's so much in the music today. Thank you, Pastor Mark. See, it makes me remind, remind the things that takes place within the body reminds me of things. Reminds me of prayer before I really get into it. You know what? When I stand up here and I, as I was talking about stepping into a place of a man who, who loved to welcome people. How do I know that? Because I've sat for, for 10 years in, in board meetings and asked him if he ever wanted to sit, um, and this, this isn't that he doesn't want to sit with his wife, Jane, but I've asked him, if you would like to sit with your wife, Jane, and just worship and be a part of the service, someone else can do the welcome for you, brother Bud. And his passion, his heart, is to welcome the church. That's why you see him, and that's why he is missed when he is not here, which leads me to pray for Bud. And it goes deeper, because I also know throughout this past week that Jane was suffering worse than him at this moment, which leads me to pray for Jane. Pastor Mark did very well with prayer this morning. And I don't mean that, please don't take this as honor this, honor that. In the concept of what I'm about to speak upon, he went through as God placed on his mind individuals to pray for, to pray for, needs to be met. And then some of us probably sat in here and probably didn't have our name called, but I'm going to tell you what, we as a church, we pray for you uh, all the time. We have a prayer calendar brought up in our Sunday school lesson. Guess who we had to pray for today? And that person's not here. Their family's not here. We pray anyways. Praying for needs of people has been taught by the Savior, Jesus, to me at least, as he, two things. First of all, in John chapter, what is it, I think 14, 15, in that ballpark area between 14 and 17 chapters, Jesus starts to show on how he's praying. He's praying personally to his Father. If you're going to take notes of any kind of thought process of, of prayer, let's start there. Praying to God. God, you are my God. You're worthy of my praise. Um, sweet hour of prayer. Standing on the promises. There is music in my soul. I worship you, God. So you pray. He also prayed for, ready? his little group. You know, so if you're, it, it, 
That's why when we talk about a prayer calendar or we talk about praying for people within this congregation or that are closely knitted to this congregation, meaning this, that I know that this family has people that live over in this state or they have this family that lives in this state and there's things that take place of, of outside of even this wall, but they're so connected to the body of these people that we pray for the group just like Jesus was praying for his group, the disciples. The beautiful thing in that area of prayer is this, that Jesus went on to pray beyond where he was in the moment. Wow, church. Maybe we, not maybe. <laughs> that stuff's written down for us to learn from so that we will take it in and it will be who we are. In the presence of God, God's presence in us, we then not only pray for uh, the... Uh, um, needs, but we especially praying for, the, or excuse me, we don't pray for ourselves with God, but we also pray for our group, and we pray beyond the group. Beyond the group. Why is that? Because unless God calls us all home, someone's going to come behind us, and they're going to be the next teacher. They're going to be the next leader. They're going to be the next pastor. They're going to be the next usher. They're going to be the next greeter. They're, you understand? They're going to be the next cook in the kitchen. They're going to be the next of what's coming up. We should be a church that is already praying for God. Unless the time is over, there's going to be people to come. We continue to pray for what's to come, not for our glory, but for your glory. In Ephesians, if you have your Bibles, I guess with that... Uh, please, always look up here. <laughs> As pastor speaks and says a few things to lead up to uh, know where we're going to be. Ephesians chapter 3. I love the, uh, the uh, verses that we've had. Um, you're going to see a huge connection with Isaiah chapter what, 54 and 1 John chapter 4. And here we are in Ephesians 3. The beauty of all of this is that how God works with individuals in what comes to us that we should take in. Um, it all intertwines from Old Testament to New Testament to who we are as a people. Once again, Paul is uh, writing in such a way to believers. Verse 12 is where I'm actually going to start. I know it says 13. See, now I'm really freaking you out. It says verse 13, Pastor. No, we're going to start at verse 12 because at verse 13 was when I'm like giving the, the, the notes to Sister Phyllis because oh, this is where I want to be. This is where God's leading me. And then all of a sudden God's like, well, man, you got to include 12. Why is that? Because you're going to see in verse 12 it says this, because of Christ and our faith in him, we can come, now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. See, Man, for us to, to journey with love, ready for the, remember I talked about cliches from the, the beginning? Here's another cliche for you. God is love. God is love. Well, that's really cool, Pastor Brent. God is love. What does that even mean? When you talk about this journey of love, this is the, gra the grasp I wanted us to get. Know this, God loves you. He loves you as a person. Always. It never stops. Don't get me wrong. He does not love your sin. He does not love your wrongdoings. But he sure loves you as a person. And with that, is, as you walk this journey on this planet, his love is for each and every one of you with lessons learned. See, that's the beauty of love. Because you go into another scripture and it says, what, love is the greatest of all of these? It covers all of these? Love, love, love? You can say all of that only because God is love and with God's presence, who is love in you, about you, then all of a sudden you recognize, this is my journey of love. And with that journey of love, because of Christ, and because, it's a two-way street, ready? There's Christ. And then there's my faith. And with that, I come boldly before who? The Father. His presence. 
When you really start to grasp this journey of love, you're going to understand this, that your journey of love is not just this one hour in this place. It is when you walk through those doors and you step out on that parking lot or you cross the street and go over there or you go to your grocery store over here. Uh, and I'm going to tell you what. Yes, it affects people. The opposite is also true. If your journey of love is, ends at those doors and you go out and you say, I'm going to live, I'm going to rebel, I'm going to be the biggest sinner there is. Or, or actually, here's how... Here's how Some people are. I'm not the biggest sinner. I just be a little sinner. I'm, I'm going to put you in, a, in the right perspective. Sin is sin is sin is sin is sin is sin. Should I keep on sinning? Certainly not. Paul writes in another section to the Romans. Certainly not. So this love journey walks out those doors. I am confidently in God's presence in all of it. Verse 13, so please don't lose heart because of my trials here. This is Paul talking. He's going through some trials. Don't lose heart. Don't get confused. Don't leave the path. Don't leave the journey of love because look at Paul. He's in trouble. And if he's in trouble, I don't want trouble like him. So I'm not going to follow God. That, that looks hard. Paul's right. Don't lose heart because of my trials here. I'm suffering for you. So you should feel honored. Uh, okay, a little arrogance there with Paul. Maybe, I don't know. It just sounds that way. You know what? I'm going through this for you. The people, the church, the body, the believers. Verse 14. Journey of love is about spiritual walk. Ready? When I think of all of this, I fall on my knees and pray to the Father. That's why I talked about the prayer calendar. That's why I talked about how we pray in service. Because we pray, 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 pray. If you're taking notes, this is what you're going to find out. It is about me and God. Verse 12. Because of Christ and my faith in Him, I'm in God's presence. That's the first thing. I ask God for forgiveness. I'm in His presence and knowing what he has on my journey of love. The second thing is this, that because of that, I fall on my knees and I pray. Pray, pray, pray. Journey of love, learn to love other people with God's love. And with that, then you can have an understanding of how you pray. It doesn't, you know, you know the, other, I, the other great section that I did not mention yet on prayer that Jesus was? Our Father which art in heaven. How let it be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive, oh my, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You know what? A simple prayer of God and me, and my needs, and how I look at other people, how I react to other people, and what takes place with God's will. Thy will be done. So, my relationship with God, pray, 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 pray. And as you're praying for your daily bread, pray for someone else's daily bread. As you're praying for your temptation, pray for someone else's temptation. Why would you, if you're on this journey of love, God loves so much, that's how I, I'm telling you, you should love like God. God does not want anyone to be in sin. None. Start to pray for your friend. Not, not like this. Ooh, did you see what they did, God? Hey, I know me and you is on it. We're on it. But did you see my friend, blah, 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 and what they were doing? Oh, Lord, you need to, then we got to get off spiritual. You need an anointing on them because, whoo, you know they're hellbound. That's not prayer. First of all, you missed the whole thing that God wants to have salvation, wants to have experience, wants to have um, life, wants to have love in that individual that you call your friend. Not to mention praying for your enemies. Matthew chapter 5. 
pray, pray, pray. Verse, uh, follow my knees and I pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with the inner strength through his spirit. You know where we fail as a people? We do not believe that God has infinite resources. No, 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 no. We read it. Ooh, God has infinite. God's all powerful. God's all this. God's all this. And we, we, create, up, we create up these words. Omniscient. Oh, I'm saying it wrong. Oh, omnipresent. We create up all these words, but we don't take it in as this is who God is. And with God, we even quote it. All things are possible through Christ who strengthens me. Okay, start believing it. Believe it this way. God has everything. Unlimited resources. And with his promise of the Holy Spirit when he was going up to heaven, it means this, that I give this to you. You will be empowered. See, catch it this way. Is God all powerful? Thank you, Mary. <laughs> See, I, I, and I'm not saying that, let me say it di different. This is not to say, oh, you all should have chimed in, yes. Your heart should have chimed in, yes. I'm just going to say that. God is not only all powerful. See, some people are like, all powerful? He's going to knock me down. No, God has the power to do everything. And with that, he empowers you. See, uh, Lauren just went through the movie of the superheroes and stuff. I, I know. But get, get, I'm going to tell you this. Some of us do not believe God empowers us with his power. So this is how I understand Paul. To, do I keep on walking out these doors and sinning? Certainly not. Why, how can I say that? Because I know God's power will take me out of, first of all, the temptation, and his power will help me to not sin. Some people in this world walk around wanting to sin. Some people walk around this world with no intention of letting God do what God does with unlimited resources. Hey, what's funny is because we're a people that love resources. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> we love re If I had all the resources, I would love that. And th this is how, we as a, uh, how the world thinks of it. I would love to have all the money in the world, resources. I would have, love to have all the houses everywhere so whenever I went somewhere, I had a place. I would love that, all the resources. I wish that I would have a, 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 a pink Lamborghini because I think that's the one Karina's going to give me. Uh, and then I wish there was a whole line of them in all the different colors of the rainbow. So that no matter what day of the week it was, I could choose any color of a car I want. I want all the resources. Don't deny it. We as a people would love to have all the resources. But we as a people don't want the resources of God. Or we decide to limit the resources of God by our rejection of all of his resources. So, presence of God, pray, 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 pray. Know that God, in that prayer, you will have power. Know that in that prayer, God will take you through everything. Know that. And then we're at this point right here. Verse 17. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Trust, 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 trust. God in me. Pray, 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 pray. Trust, 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 trust. See, to do all that stuff I was talking about, if you don't trust that God will do it, how, how, why do we expect it? I trust God will use His resources to empower me. I trust that God's Holy Spirit will actively be a part of who I am. I trust that because of His Holy Spirit, notice it said the inner, that God is in me. 
God is with me. God, what's in, and just so you know, what's inside of you is outside of you. Ready for your last cliche, I think, of the day? Garbage in, garbage out. We can all deny it. <laughs> it's still garbage in, garbage out. You can, oh no, yeah. Slow down and take a look at the garbage you got in and see what you spew out, what you think out. Garbage in, garbage out. Or you can have the Holy Spirit in doing all that God has to um, make his home in your heart. Trust, trust, trust. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And the, guys, the, we're about to go into communion in just a moment. Okay? I'm going to close out real quick right here. It, this scripture is so huge. My relationship, who I am with God, my prayer life that is with God and is about to go really deep. I told you how deep it had to start going. Okay? But it's going to get a little deeper. But I love this part before I get into my prayer of, of what I'm doing. Is I'm going to grow in God. And be strong. Grow and be strong. I will emphasize again and again how important Wednesday night Bible study is and Sunday school is. Or you can even call it a small group down there. Whatever you want to, I don't care what titles you give these things. Because here's what it is. No matter what title you give it, this is what it is. It is a gathering of people to grow in Christ, to grow in God, to get knowledge, to understand, to ask questions. Here's the problem with this one hour. Is you get some guy who stands up, who did some studying, who basically just reads scripture. Let's say, you know, he adds stuff in story, but he just reads scripture, which is great. That's great. But in this moment, there's no, hey, Pastor Man, I got a question. I got a question about this growing spiritually. The best times, I'm not going to stop you from asking questions. Kinda. <laughs> but Wednesday and Sunday morning are the best times to ask questions. To make statements. Verse, verse, verse 18. And may you have the power. Ready? Man, we're back at this power thing. <laughs> and may you have the power to understand as all God's people should. Yeah. How wide, how long, how high. And how, how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ through it. Excuse me. May you experience the love of Christ though it is too great to understand fully. You will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. This deep love journey. Because I'm going to. I wish I had more time to go. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to say this. That was humongous. How deep, how wide, how long, how, how high God's love is. Some of you might have a question right here. May you experience the love of Christ. What? What is that? Okay, come on Wednesday. Here, God, because I know Colossians is all about <laughs> your relationship with God. So Colossians, come on Wednesday. In fact, there, there's one week where there's kind of comes up and goes, man, Brent, all it was is reading. And I go, well, guess what? All this week is, is question after question after question. A lot of questions. To grow in knowing all of God. To experience God as you, when I talk about experience, you know, I'm not talking about dancing and jumping and hollering, hooping and hollering and making um, all kinds of uh, outward appearance like that. The experience of God is a life journey and it's everything. So do you experience God here and do you experience God when you walk out these doors? Or do you experience the world? And if we're truthful, we know the difference between the two. Pastor Mark, come on up. We're going to sing a couple of verses as we get ready to close into communion. As they're coming up, verse 20. Now all glory to God. Ready? Are you ready? We talked about, we talked about God and 
presence. We talked about pray, 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 trust, experience all this growth in this love journey with God. Experience what your life is going to be like. And then I want you to know this. If you don't get nothing, get this one. Yeah. Now all glory to God who is able. See, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about some other great person and some great leader. It is about God. He is the one who is able to complete everything that is promised here. Everything that is given in these words, God is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. As we get ready to close, this song right here, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Ready? Consecrated. God, let me be everything of you. I give you everything. I give you the hour of church. I give you the hour on Wednesday. Oh, and by the way, God, I have just now decided to give you every step I take, every breath I take from this moment on out there. In my weakest time, give me your power. In my greatest of time, let me be the one that takes no glory but gives you all glory as I share it with others. In all of the infinite resources you give me, God, may I give to someone else in your name and not mine. Let us stand. God, as we are about to sing these closing words and go into a time of communion, remembering that you died on the cross for us. God, help us to truly give ourselves to you. If there is someone here this morning that has had a rough day or a rough morning and, and their hearts have been hurt or their hearts have been hardened or there's words that have been said or thoughts that have been given, God, we ask in this moment that our hearts, who we are as a person, is completely clean in your presence. We ask for forgiveness of the things that we know are so wrong, God. And that our next steps are so holy. Only through your power. In Jesus' name, amen.